Come on in. Come on in. Good afternoon. God bless you, Marcy. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I don't know if you can hear my background in the back, Emily. She's uh, working on her vocal cords. <laughs> I think she's going to be not only a preacher, but she's going to be a singer. Come on in. Are you ready? Are you here singing? <laughs> Amen. Hey man, you ready? Good. Today, I, I'm not going to be too long. God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. I am going to talk about, are you here singing? Uh, nervous energy. Nervous energy. And what is nervous energy? Nervous energy is when you become frustrated. Nervous energy is when things are not going your way. Nervous energy is when uh, you've had enough. Now, some of you that are listening to me and that you're listening to me, you've been believing God. You've been believing God, but you're at a place now where you're ready for God to move. You're ready for him to move. You don't want to hear no more prophecies about God going to do. You at a place now where you want God to move. You don't want to hear none of that. You want to see God move. You know what God has said he's going to do. But you're at a place now you're saying, God, show me. Show me. Show me your promise. Show me. Prove to me. You're at that place. Nervous energy. You're upset. You're angry. Deadline has passed. You're looking at your deadline. You're looking at what you have. You're looking at yourself. You're looking at God's word. And you're saying within yourself, when? What do you do when you're in this place right now? How do you respond? How do you respond? I know you feel like giving up. But giving up is not an option. It's not an option at all. It's not an option at all. And the thing about it, you've been waiting for a long time. That's what it is. You've been waiting. You've been waiting. And you're tired of waiting. And the sad thing about it, the sad thing about it, you go to your friends. And your friends give you bad advice. Even the person that's in your heart that you love the most, they don't understand what you're going through. They don't understand what you're feeling. They don't understand what you're waiting on. They see your face, but they don't know. It's like a volcano inside of you that is about to erupt. It's about to erupt. And when you're out in public, you put on your best face. You put on your best face. You make your friends and you make people think that it's okay at work or whatever. It's okay, I'm good. And you know, you go through the roles and you go through the changes and whatnot. But deep inside, there's a storm. Inside, there's a fight that's in your spirit. It's just like a duck. It's like a duck paddling on the water. Now, on the upside, on the top of the water, all you can see is the duck going along. God bless you. God bless you. That book coming today, uh, uh, Apostle, Apostle uh, Fitzpatrick, you, you're traveling along. That duck is traveling along. The face is calm. But what people don't know about that duck, if only you can look underneath the water, if only they can look underneath the water and see that duck pellet just to stay afloat, just to stay on top. That's you. You trying to stay on top. You trying. You trying. Everything is on you, it feels like. Family. Pressure. That's what it is. It's pressure. Pressure. Not everybody can handle pressure. Not bad everybody can handle it. People can say they can handle it. But what pressure does Pressure calls out and it brings out what's in you. Is there strength in you? Is there power in you? Now, you tell people you're strong, but now the tire is meeting the road. Where is your strength? Will you fold up? Will you give up? Will you walk away? Or will you stand? 
I'm reminded in the Bible, Job. Job was a righteous man. Excused evil. Love God. Faithful. One day, Satan came with the sons of the prophet. And God actually have you considered my servant Job. And Job said, well, you got a hedge around him. And Job said, if you, if, you, if you remove that hedge, he'll curse you to your face. And so God said, you can touch him. You can touch him, but you can't touch his life. And so it happened. Job lost everything. And after Job lost everything, his friends, his three boys, sat for seven days and just looked at him. Just looked at him. And then when they opened their mouth up, they said, that's something that you did, Job. Why are you dealing with what you're dealing? Why are you feeling what you're feeling? It's your fault. Many of you, your friends, even the enemies, they are blaming you. They are blaming you where you are right now. The ones that you invited in, they are blaming you. Your mind is blaming you. Everything about, everything in you is blaming you. Then, to top it off, the person that you care about the most, they blaming you too. They trying to start an argument with you. You're already going through what you're going through. You're always trying to, to, to maintain, not to explode, not to erupt. And now, you think that God would send someone that would give you help. You think that God would someone would bring someone to you that, would, that you would trust, that know you, that know your heart, that know your position, that know your desire, that saw you would help you, but instead they're hurting you. Job, why said, curse God to your, your face, in his face and die, die. This you, it's like help at, at the place where you are. It's like the help that normally would help is done disappeared. It's nowhere to be found. Job said, I go to my right and I can't find you. I go to my left, does seem to work on your left, but you done hid yourself. Then Job concluded that, well, God, you know the way that I take. And after, I, after you've tried me, I'm going to come through as pure gold. And I come to tell you the place where you are right now, that pressure, you're in that place, nervous condition, nervous energy. You're in a place where you want to do something. You want to do something to make something change. It's like you're in, you're in fire and you're trying to find water. You're trying to find relief from somewhere. It doesn't matter what it is now. It's not just about God. It's just about God. It's just about surviving. It's just about, you know, making it. That's what it's all about now. And see the thing about it in the back of your mind. Your mind is going back to the streets. See, in the streets, you can make things happen. In the streets, you can cause things to happen. But there's a consequence with that street. That's where you are right now. By any means necessary. You're ready to do whatever to make things happen. That's where you are. Because you're tired. You're sick and tired of being where you are. You're sick and tired of being hurt. You're sick and tired of being uh, between a rock and a hard place. You're sick and tired of feeling the way that you're feeling. You've prayed over and over again. Ask God for help. But I come to tell you that God allowed this to happen. God allowed it to happen. And see what God is doing. God is proving his word. He's proven what he's put in you through you. And the answer that I said what you should do and how should you respond when everything everything has failed, everybody that you depended on has walked away, what you should do? Stand. Stand. Because this is a test. And I come to tell you that this test does have an expiration date. It's almost over. There's an old saying that at the darkest hour is just before day. Weeping may endure for a night. You are in your night time, but joy comes in the morning. I'm not talking crazy. And I'm not just talking, but I'm talking fact. I know what I'm talking about. Joy is coming. Joy is coming. And some of you, you on the thresholds of your breaking. Jesus, in that hour where he wanted to give up, he, and he asked Father, could I give up? I want to give up. I would that I give up. But he said, not my will, but your will be done. And once he said that, once he released that, he re re and he surrendered to God, to the Father, the Bible says that that's when the angels came down and strengthened him. That's where you are. You're weary. You're weary. You're worn out. You're tired. You're tired. You're tired of smiling. You're tired of praying. Just be real. 
You're so nervous and you're so irritated and you're going through so much in this fire that it's hard for you to even read. So all you do, you meditate on God. You meditate on this word because it's so hard because this thing got you distracted. It's pulling your mind. It's pulling your mind. It is. It's pulling your mind. And you know what God, the word God, the word says, but this situation is saying something else. It's a storm. It's a test. God say, pass that test. Because God has something for you after you pass it. There's a blessing waiting on you after you pass it. See, the thing about it, the greater the, the, greater the test, the greater the hell, the greater, the greater the anointing. There's an anointing in you. See, but God has to prove you. Your anointing, see, your anointing is not free. It's not free at all. You prophesied, you prayed. Uh, you said God going to do this and you know, spoken to people's lives and whatnot. And See, but now it's you. And you're looking at people being blessed. But that same word that God spoke to you, that same word I ain't doing nothing at all, just standing and looking in your face. And you wonder, what's wrong with you? Did I do something wrong? Did I say something wrong? What about me, God? What about me? Stand. The Bible said, and having done all to stand, stand. It seems like the world, the walls are closing in on you. But stand. It feels like you're on that elevator. In that elevator, where you, where you pushed up, but it feels like it's going down. And it seems like in this particular elevator, where it, it provided air, it provided oxygen, it feels like your breath, the oxygen, has been taken away from you. It seems like you've been hit and you've been hit so hard you can't breathe. You can't breathe. Life, it seems like life has been taken from you. It's robbed you of who you are. It's robbed you of your hopes. It robbed you of your dreams. See, because that's what it is. It's a dream you've been hoping. You've been believing. But your hope and your dreams, it seems like it's been the shadow. It seems like you're in this, you're in this, you're in this tunnel. And 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 you think it's the end of the tunnel. It's, you think it's the light that's coming at the end of the tunnel. But then, suddenly, it's a train hits you. Many of you hit, you're bit, you're hurt, you're knocked down. And you're, you're, you're struggling, you're trying to find answers, you're trying to gather yourself, you're trying to gather strength, you're trying to be strong, you're trying to be everything that, that people are looking at you want you to be. You're trying to be everything that God called you to be. You're trying to be that, you're trying, but it's hard. It's hard. You don't want to smile no more. You want to snap at everybody. But God says, stand. But while you're standing, don't complain. See, because with this nervous energy, with this nervousness, see, nervousness, won't you, it makes you want to complain. It makes you want to fuss. It makes you want to say, God, what, what is me? Why is me? What, why, where, where am I? what about me? It makes you want to do everything as a cry. But this cry, you want to cry negatively. But God said you can cry. But cry to him in faith. Cry to him in hope. See, because the Bible said the righteous can cry. And God will hear. David said, God, you bottle up my tears. You bottle them up. You put them up. And see, there's a Jewish custom that they took tears that has been bottled up. And they put them in his grave. And in this grave, those bottled up tears, these bottled up tears, they serve as a memorial. Or they serve as a, uh, a, 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 a cry. It serves as a cry to God. And this cry says from the ground, God, I'm crying. God, I'm crying for help. God, I'm crying for answers. God, I'm crying for deliverance. This is you. You're crying. There's a cry in you. People don't see it, but there's a cry. Inside, there's so many tears. Inside, there's so much of a fight, a struggle. You're tired. You won't change. You're tired of living the way you're living. You're tired of feeling the way you're feeling. You're tired of facing the things that you're facing. You want relief. You want God to snatch you away. Stay right there. And I tell you what you need to do. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands in a form of rescue. Because when you lift up your hands in a form of rescue, God will and God is going to. But you have to have a certain position. That position is faith. That position is trust. The Bible tells us, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things be at trust in the Lord. With your whole heart, God wants your heart. In this matter, God wants your heart. He don't want your mouth to complain, but God wants your heart. Because your heart, that's what he wants. Because that is the very thing that's going to cause your response, your heart. That's why God wants to speak to you. At this place right now, at this place of pressure, at this place of pain, God wants you to say, nevertheless.
what I'm going through, what I'm feeling, how I'm feeling, and what I want to do. I want to do wrong, God. I want to say something wrong, God. But nevertheless, lift your hands. Lift your hands, and God is going to flip it. God is going to flip it. This is your test. This is the end of your test. This is the last stage of your test. You're at the threshold of walking, of, of transition, of walking from where you are to where God wants you to be. This is your elevation. Your pain is your elevation. Your pressure is your elevation. Will you stand? Do you want it? Do you want it bad enough? If you want it bad enough, you're going to stand. I promise you, God is coming. God is, this is a sure word. God is going to, God is going to answer. God is going to move and God is going to respond to the very thing that you're waiting for. The very thing that you're hoping for. But you must stand right here. You must stand because God is proving himself to you. That's what he's doing. Because in order to reign with him, you know what you got to do? You got to suffer. And your suffering, your suffering, where you are, is making you closer to God. If you learn how to block out what you're feeling, if you learn to block out what you're hearing, if you learn to block out what you're seeing, and close your spiritual eyes and trust God, it's drawing you close to God. Because while you're in what you're in, God is preparing a table before you. If you can see it. Before the presence of the enemy. God is preparing, even in that storm, God is speaking peace. See, because that storm does have an expiration date because there is a graduation. There is a ceremony. There is a new dimension. There is a new plateau. There is a new level that God is lifting, to, lifting you up to. But it's being lifted up to, you're being lifted through your pressure and you're being lifted through your storm. Hear me and hear me well. Nervous energy. Hang in there. Hang in there. Don't let your mind start to run. Don't let your mind... Don't, don't let bad thoughts go in your mind because the devil, that's what he want to do. That's a silent voice. See, when you go through what you're going through, when you're in that storm, that's when that devil, that adversary is going to speak to you and tell you everything that's negative, trying to get you out, trying to get you to get in flesh, trying to get you to do things that God didn't call you to do, but God wants you to wait. Wait, I say on the Lord. And see, in your waiting, the Bible says, in your waiting, he's going to strengthen your heart. That's the promise. The word says, in your wait, in your wait, where you are right now, he's going to strengthen your heart. Let him strengthen your heart. That's why he wants your heart. He wants your heart because he wants to strengthen your heart. He wants to strengthen you in this thing right now. He wants to strengthen you because God said his, his strength is made perfect when you're weak. At your weak place, God is perfecting his strength. God is grooming. And matter of fact, the Bible says strengthen those things that remain that are ready to die. See, there are certain things that you want to die. You want to lay down. But God wants you to strengthen it through his word. See, because what God is doing, God is calling you to arise. And see, what God is doing, he's birthing. That's your birthing place. This is your birthing place. God is birthing out of you a new wisdom. God is birthing out of you a new aroma, a new sound. And you know what a new sound is? Is his word. Victory, testimony, his language. See, to know his face. See, that's why it's so important to get in his face. Because when you get in his face, you know his language. And his language is victory. His language is you can overcome. You can make it. If you can take it, you can make it. Don't walk away. Don't give up. You can make it. You can make it because there's an old saying, I'm blind after saying. And my spiritual father always said, God will take you over the top before he'll let you go on. And you're not going to go on and you're not going to see. You're not going to die. You're not going to die alone. You're not going to die sad. You're not going to die. This sickness is not under death. You're not losing your mind at all. It's just a storm. It's just a test. You're in that last leg. That last leg. It's that last, that last turn. It's almost over. So keep holding on and keep running. Keep pulling. There's a gut check now. This is a gut check. See, this is the last play. Hey, the clock is ticking. This is the gut check. Are you going to gut it out? God wants you to gut it out. God wants you to dig. God wants you to stand. God wants you to grab faith. God wants you to lift up your hands and believe him. Against all lies. The Bible said the just live by faith. You're not living by what you see, but you're living by what God already said. Because you know what? Close your eyes. God done it before. And surely, he can do it again. God bless you. Have a good day. Amen.